molecule? This is DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid. By the end of this video, you will be able to identify the key structural features of DNA, as well as describe the importance of those features for function. During this video, we will look at different representations of the DNA molecule to better view certain details, but all views represent this same structure. Inside the cell, you will most commonly find double-stranded DNA, in which two strands intertwine to form a double helix. The most common form of the DNA double helix, which is what we will discuss here, is also called B-form DNA. Now, let's move to a more simplified representation of DNA to discuss the details. We can unwind the double helix like this, so that we can see the chemical structure inside. Each strand is a polynucleotide, meaning the strand is made up of many individual units called nucleotides. A nucleotide has three components, the five carbon sugar, a phosphate group, and one of four possible nitrogenous bases, adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. The nitrogenous base is always attached at the one prime carbon of the sugar. If we count from there, we can see that there is a phosphate between the five prime carbon of one sugar and the three prime carbon of the neighboring sugar. The sugar is called deoxyribose because it is missing a hydroxyl group at the two prime carbon, which is present in ribose. Because of this, nucleotides in DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, are called deoxynucleotides. Nucleotides attach to each other in the DNA strand by phosphodiester bonds. The phosphate group of one nucleotide binds to the three prime oxygen of the neighboring nucleotide. Thus, we can see that the sugars and phosphate groups make up the DNA backbone. The carbon numbering is key to describing the directionality of the DNA strand, five prime to three prime. Looking within the sugars, there is an intrinsic orientation difference between the two strands. On the top strand, you can see that the 5' prime carbon of each sugar is on the left, and the 3' prime carbon is on the right. The opposite is true for the bottom strand. Reading left to right, that makes the top strand orientation 5' prime to 3', prime, and the bottom strand orientation 3' prime to 5'. Prime. These strands are also sometimes called Watson and Crick. Keep in mind that this double-stranded DNA is still a double helix, and we have simplified the representation by flattening and unwinding the helix here to better see the atomic structure. Although the nucleotides come together through covalent bonds in the backbone, the two DNA strands interact through non-covalent hydrogen bonds between the bases. Each base forms multiple hydrogen bonds with its complementary base on the opposite strand, bound together by hydrogen bonds, each unit is called a base pair. The hydrogen bonding contributes to the specificity of base pairing. Thymine preferentially pairs with adenine through two hydrogen bonds, and cytosine preferentially pairs with guanine through three hydrogen bonds. Thymine and cytosine are called pyrimidines, characterized by their single ring structure, and adenine and guanine are called purines, which have double rings. The geometry of the AT, or TA, and GC, or CG, base pairs is the same, allowing for symmetry and base stacking in the helix. This mostly has to do with the distance between the backbones and the angles to which the base is attached to the backbone. Other base pairs, like GT, for example, do not have the same geometry, cannot form strong hydrogen bonds, and disturb the helix. The double helix structure of DNA is highly regular. Each turn of the helix measures approximately 10 base pairs. In addition to the hydrogen bonding between the bases, the stacking of the bases also stabilizes the double helix structure. These pi-pi interactions form when the aromatic rings of the bases stack next to each other and share electron probabilities. The regularity of the helical structure forms two repeating and alternating spaces called the major and minor grooves. 
these grooves act as base pair recognition and binding sites for proteins. The major groove contains base pair specific information, while the minor groove is largely base pair nonspecific. This is because of the patterns of hydrogen bond acceptors and donors that proteins can interact with in the grooves. In this way, the DNA can be acted upon in either a sequence-specific or non-sequence-specific manner, allowing proteins to position themselves correctly in the genome to carry out their designated tasks. This is the DNA double helix, and you've now learned the structural features that influence its function. We hope you've enjoyed exploring this amazing molecule with us. Okay, students, now you have seen the video on DNA. I hope you have followed the structure of DNA. Let us study about it more. Chromosomes are mainly made up of DNA. This acid was discovered by the Swiss biochemist Frederick Mescher in 1869 while studying the white blood cells. Initially, this acid was reported to be, the only, to be only in the nucleus of cells. Hence, it was named nucleic acids. However, it was later realized that it is present in other parts of the cell too. Molecules of DNA are present in all organisms from viruses and bacteria to human beings. These molecules control the functioning, growth and division, that is the reproduction of the cell and are therefore called master molecules. The structure of DNA molecule is the same in all organisms. In 1953, Watson and Crick produced a model of DNA molecule. As per this model, two parallel threads of nucleotides are coiled around each other. This arrangement is called as the double helix. This structure can be compared with the coiled and the flexible ladder. Now, each strand in the molecule of DNA is made up of many small molecules known as nucleotides. There are four types of nitrogen bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. Adenine and guanine are called as purines, while cytosine and thymine are called as pyrimidines. In the structure of the nucleotide, a molecule of nitrogen base and phosphoric acid are each attached to the molecule of sugar. As there are four types of nitrogen bases, nucleotides are also of four types. Now, Nucleotides are arranged like a chain in a molecule of DNA. The two threads of the DNA molecule are comparable to the two rails of a ladder and each rail is made up of alternately joined molecules of sugar and phosphoric acid. Each rung of the ladder is a pair of nitrogen bases joined by hydrogen bonds. Adenine always pairs with thymine and cytosine always pairs with guanine. So I hope you have followed the structure of DNA. Now let us see what do you mean by a gene. Each chromosome is made up of a single DNA molecule. Segments of DNA molecule are called as genes. Got it children? Segments of DNA molecule are called as genes. So you should learn this definition. Due to the variety in the sequence of the nucleotides, different kinds of genes are formed. These genes are arranged in a line. Genes control the structure and function of the cells and of the body. Also, they transmit the hereditary characteristics from parents to offspring. Hence, they are also called as the functional units of hereditary. Okay, so genes are also said to be the functional units of hereditary. That is why many similarities are seen between parents and their offspring. Information about protein synthesis is stored in the genes. So this is the figure 16.4 DNA Watson and Crick model. Now DNA fingerprinted, look at the blue box there. Okay, so this blue box, the sequence of the genes in the DNA of a person, that is the genome, the genome of a person is identified. It is useful to identify the lineage and also to identify the criminals because of its unique, because it being unique to every person. So now, let us go to page 183. Now, in the picture, you can uh, see there the structure of the DNA, which we have already studied. Now, the green box, that is the seeds of technology, is deleted fully. Okay, that paragraph is deleted. Now, let us study 
RNA that is ribonucleic acid. RNA is the second important nucleic acid of the cell. This nucleic acid is made up of ribose sugar, phosphate molecules and four types of nitrogen bases. Adenine, guanine, cytosine and uracil. The nucleotide that is the smallest unit of chain of RNA molecule is formed by the combination of ribose sugar, phosphate molecule and one of the nitrogen bases, nitrogenous bases. Large number of nucleotides are bonded together to form the macromolecule of RNA. Macro means big. So according to the function, there are three types of RNA. In this figure 16.6, you can see the types of RNA, mRNA, rRNA, rRNA and tRNA. Now first one, ribosomal RNA, that is rRNA. The molecule of RNA which is a component of the ribose organelle is called as a ribosomal RNA. Ribosomes perform the function of protein synthesis. Second, messenger RNA, mRNA, this RNA molecule that carries the information of protein synthesis from genes that is DNA chain to the cell nucleus to ribosomes in the cytoplasm which produce the proteins is called as a messenger RNA. Now, transfer RNA or tRNA, the RNA molecule which according to the message of the mRNA carries the amino acids up to the ribosomes is called as a transfer RNA. So, I hope you have followed DNA and RNA. So, you will read this lesson till where we have finished and let us watch another video about RNA. Nucleic acids are the building blocks of life. Wait, but isn't DNA the building blocks of life? Yes, both are correct. DNA is a type of nucleic acid. And in this video, we are going to have a quick look at another type, RNA. We have both DNA and RNA in our bodies. We need them both. DNA is the blueprint. It contains all of the instructions for the cell to grow, function, and replicate. The RNA carries out these instructions. It copies and transfers the genetic code from the DNA to ensure the relevant proteins are made. So just think of it as DNA makes RNA makes proteins. So let's look at how they differ. Whereas DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. Whilst DNA is double-stranded, RNA is single-stranded. Like DNA, RNA is made up of a long chain of nucleotides. Each nucleotide consists of a ribose sugar, phosphate group, and nucleotide base. RNA has a sugar called ribose, whereas DNA has a sugar called deoxyribose. Look here, RNA has a base, uracil, or U, whereas DNA has the base thymine, or T. So in RNA, C and G still pair. But now, A and U pair. We need to know about RNA because we will see it when learning about protein synthesis. We will see these two special types of RNA. Messenger RNA, which is known as mRNA, and transfer RNA, which is known as tRNA. We will see the mRNA being synthesized inside the nucleus, copied from the DNA code. The tRNA is found in the cytoplasm. For many years, we just thought RNA was a DNA photocopier, as mRNA, the protein builder, as tRNA, and found in ribosomes, as rRNA. However, RNA can also act as enzymes to speed up chemical reactions, and in many viruses, they have RNA instead of DNA. The RNA carries the genetic codes in those viruses. So there we have RNA. From this video, you should now know about the existence of RNA. It is a single-stranded nucleic acid that has a base U instead of base T.